Hi, I'm Kendra Herto. Welcome to Lenormand Step by Step. Before we get started, I want to share with you a little bit about myself and about the Lenormand deck. So I'm the creator, co-creator of five Lenormand decks. The other artist and creator is my daughter Katrina Hill. She's made four of the decks with me. We started with Under the Roses Lenormand, which was initially self-published and then picked up by US Games Systems Inc. and they now mass market publish it. Our other works are two holiday decks and Lenormand silhouettes and I have a solo deck called Kendra's Vintage Petite Lenormand. So I discovered Lenormand in my pursuit of tarot, of course, and a friend turned me on to it. And as soon as I saw the deck, I was like, oh wow, I have got to create one of those decks. And that's what we did. <laughs> so <laughs> we started with Under the Roses Lenormand and we moved on to two holiday decks and then we moved on to uh, Kendra's Vintage Petite Lenormand and then we moved on to Lenormand Silhouettes. Anyways, most of our decks can be found at undertheroses.wix.com slash undertheroses or you can find us on Facebook. So, um, I want to tell you a little bit about the deck now. The, um, the deck is, is named after an infamous card reader. Her name was Mademoiselle Lenormand and um, she died in 1843, I'm gonna say. Anyways, um, she did not actually use the deck. The Grand Lenormand and the Petite Lenormand were named after her shortly and produced shortly after her death. She, it is thought that she used the tarot and probably the Petit Italo, which is like a 32 card deck. Anyway, but um, her reputation is what these cards are built on. And um, the card, the deck itself is made up of 36 cards and, and in the um, deck you will see that there are specific images or emblems or symbols for you to understand uh, before you read them, okay? So in each one, we have a different symbol, and that symbol is going to represent something to you, and we're going to figure out what that is, and then we're going to put more than one together to make them work, okay? And so the deck is made up of, um, let's see, what is it missing? Well, if you look at it like a card deck, uh, tarot decks made up of 78 cards, right? So it has um, all of the regular card numbers that you would see in a regular playing card deck, right? Which is there's like 54 cards in a regular playing card deck. And then in a tarot card deck, there's an extra court card called a page, and um, that constitute four more cards and then there's the major arcana and that's 22 cards so that makes up the 78 uh, card deck. Lenormand's reduces the card deck. Um, the, the correspondences are usually small on them but you'll notice that the numbers 2 through uh, two through 5 are not in the deck so aces and 6 through king is present and it makes up 36 cards. Oh, we're going to actually move right into our first lesson and just give you uber basics and then we'll hit lesson two. How does that sound? So for this lesson, you will need the documents that I've given you, okay? You should have two pages of instructional information. I kept it as brief as possible so that you would actually read it. <laughs> and then you should have a nine card square or three by three as it's called. Also. I want to make sure that your deck is prepped because some of the Lenormand decks come with extra cards or alternate cards and all my decks are like this but I want you to go through and make sure that you have cards 1 through 36 for these lessons because that's going to help you to understand exactly what you have to do. Um, you can always add or change cards later but for right now keep it to the in, the original 1 through 36 cards okay so if there's extra cards alternate cards take them out. I'm really excited because we're going to start from the very simplistic and build on to this really elaborate way to understand the cards. So, 
Let's keep it super simple. You already know how the deck is made up, right? It's made up of 36 cards. Now we're going to talk about what is on the cards. Well, what's on the cards are symbols, right? And each symbol is very straightforward and there isn't a lot of background information. So if you're a tarot reader, you're not used to this. You're not used to seeing the sun and having the sun be the card. You're not used to seeing the moon and saying that's it, that's, that's what's on the card. What we want to see in the Lenormand cards are really straightforward images. We want that really clear so it, it makes it more precise, okay? So you'll see that there's 36 cards and they have different images. And what we are going to do is understand what those images mean and how to use them. So before we do that, let me talk a little bit about the traditions of Lenormand, okay? So the traditions of Lenormand are the areas that they come from, or the schools where they come from. So uh, they are all over the world, but primarily in Europe. You will find um, the Belgian system, French system, German system, you get the idea. And each one of those systems has a different set of keywords. And in depending where they are, some cards mean one thing and some cards mean another. What we're going to do today is we are going to do an untraditional method of defining keywords. You're going to create your own. So uh, I think by doing this, first of all, you're really clear about what the image means. I mean, you see it, you know. It's that, right? Second of all, I'll get you rolling and reading the cards sooner and you won't have to study the traditions immediately. I do suggest that you, to, that you actually spend the time and do that, okay? Because I think that um, it's worth it to at least investigate. In your first lesson, you're gonna put down what that card means to you. So for your homework, you are going to take a piece of paper and write one to 36 on the cards. You're gonna go down each card that you have and you're going to write one to three keywords, okay? This is something I just really want you to do. I don't want you to move forward until you've done this <clears throat> because then you'll see why it's so important that you've done this later. So when you get to card 21, you'll say the mountain, and what does the mountain mean to you? To me, the mountain is blockages. If you have a hard time and you have one of my decks, refer to the keywords for inspiration, okay? But get those keywords written down. If you get hung up, don't let it stop you from moving forward, but you want to get this mostly filled out. One thing that you should know uh, before you do that is that the cards have significators in them. And those are the, the gentleman cards and the lady cards. Okay? So these don't have necessarily keywords. They're known as the gentleman of significance and, and the lady of significance. Okay? And when so we talk about significator cards, we're talking about these cards because they are going to be about the people that are getting the reading. So there's that. So <clears throat> again, I'm going to reiterate here. You've got a simple image on each card. You're going to write down the number of the card. If you want, write the title of the card. And then you're going to write down keywords. Now keywords are not descriptions. It is not this is lovely and it's embossed with uh, certain writing and it has a diamond on top. That is not a keyword. A keyword is commitment. Uh, the scythe. What do you see when you see the scythe? My keywords for the scythe are cut off, um, ending, harvest. I might have one more. <laughs> Anyways, so I want you to go down the list. So that is it. Okay, just understand what your significators are and write your list of keywords. Now this is called personally scribed meanings and a lot of people use it and um, I find that I think it makes for a richer reading but if you're really into studying, like I said, go back and study those traditions or get a list of the traditional keywords from those areas and then, then you can move forward with your readings. But this will get you rolling right away, okay? So now we're going to go off to combos and see how that works because 
in tarot, when we pull a tarot card, we do one card tarot reading. Well, it's just a reading from one card. And when we do Lenormand readings, we don't do that. We always read two cards together. So we'll read one card and then we'll read another card. And that card influences the first card, okay? And we're going to talk about that more in lesson two. 